it is uh, difficult to argue with uh, Professor Stiglitz. My, my problem with, with this conversation is that I, I agree in most things with the Professor. So, even, not, not even, much even, to argue even, about. even, even on a, with a, a windfall tax on, on uh, energy companies? Well, as a matter of fact, last year, uh, in a small economy like Greece, the, the windfall tax that uh, we energy companies had to pay uh, what was north of the 1 billion euros. Uh, so that, that's a lot of money for Greece. Where did this money go? This money go to subsidize the low income consumers. And uh, therefore, in a, in, a, in a social sense of the meaning, it worked. Uh, how, long, how long can that last? And how things are going to play out going forward, it remains to be seen. I heard the professor very carefully. Uh, I want to say a couple of things about Greece. I will not spend uh, as much time. The professor deserves much more time in the conversation, with all respect. So, so Greece, has, since uh, 2008, has, fade, has faced a multiple crisis. However, to have to say, it has managed to respond effectively, become resilient and su successfully overcome challenges and serve the international as an international example. There's no doubt about it. Today, Greece is experiencing growth, earning investment grade, grade ratings. Last week, as you know, that told us, made us very happy and become an attractive investment destination. Uh, yesterday evening, we, uh, I was present at the initiation of the new investment of Fairfax uh, of Canada in, in uh, south of, uh, of Athens in the 300 uh, million tourist project, which is an example of what can happen in Greece going forward. But, if I were to identify pillars for the country's further development, apart from the shipping, which is always thriving in the global marketplace, is probably number one, uh, and apart from tourism that the professor mentioned, I would certainly add industrial production and processing as well as the digital transformation. So Greece, I think, is a good example for the European Union at the moment. My perspective of the world uh, is the European perspective. Uh, I happen to be president of the European Metals Association and I get in touch with a lot of big companies in, uh, in the marketplace. And uh, we did not have the chance to talk uh, what's happening in Europe. We talked about the US and China I have a view on, on the US. Um, we have to admit that the world is uh, in a turbulent situation that we have not witnessed for years. Uh, 2008, uh, I think we never really recovered. It was a, a recovery on the surface, deep, the recovery never came. And then we had the pandemic. And uh, right after the pandemic, we had the energy crisis. Now, the energy crisis uh, was much worse in this part of the world, in Europe, rather than in the US, in Asia, or, or other places. In the US, because of shale, and in Asia, because of coal. As you know, they use as much coal as they can, but if we use coal in Europe, we get very heavy penalties. For all these kinds of reasons, Europe at the moment is being left behind on the financial side, but I'm afraid also on the political side. As we can witness now from the crisis in Israel, Europe 
has hardly any decisive say in the world. Different leaders uh, visit Israel at different times. I don't know what every leader says from his own side. Uh, there's no united front. Some governments face uh, Palestinian troubles in their own countries, some others not. Uh, I'm afraid the, the Europe, the way it has evolved, it has become dysfunctional. The interests, for example, of the Baltic states are 180 degrees different from the interests of the Iberian Peninsula, for example. So how can you mix all this without a fiscal and political union? I'd have grave doubts. On the other hand, on the other side of the Atlantic, we have the problems in a pre-year election, which I'm afraid in the year election, which is next year, are going to become bigger. And that is going to, to be the heavy problem of next year.